Day 17. Motivation. Day 17 of our Spanish lockdown. I was forced to jump out of bed and blearily throw some clothes on to catch the pool before the pump came on. It had rained all night, and we are trying to save chlorine by adding liquid bleach. Climbing the stepladder, I added some. In the process, splashing my last good jumper with bleach. In the couple of weeks of lockdown, I have managed to break my glasses. They are held together with cello tape. I wanted to stick them together with super glue, but in the end, Chris banned me. In case I managed to super glue my glasses to my head. He said that he was not going to take me to Santa Ana, the local hospital, with my glasses glued to my ears whilst the hospital was so busy with the virus. He had a point. I have a hole in my other jumper. Three good legs cat did that. My second good pair of trousers have developed a hole in the left knee. My trainers have come away a little at the sole. And yes, they also have a hole in the toe end. And yesterday I discovered that my underpants were also sporting a hole in them too. So all in all, I'm looking quite dishevelled. And it's only week three. We are both finding it hard to be motivated. So many people back in the UK are announcing that I'm going to write that book that they were always wanting to write. Darling, I'm going to take up oil painting. Learn a new language. Trust me. By week two, at 11am in the morning, you will be pissed on Jack Daniels in your underpants watching Homes Under the Hammer. Motivation is all about organisation, planning your day, planning what you need for a whole week at the supermarket. I have never been a very well organised person. When I first became a radio producer, I was thrown in at the deep end. I became the producer of The Pete Murray Show. Pete was a much-loved radio presenter. He'd been in film and TV. Indeed, he actually picked me to be his producer. It uh, turned out that he thought I'd be a soft touch and let him have all his chums on on the daily radio show he presented. He was right. My long-suffering programme assistant, Kath, kept the diary of guests. I could never read her scratchy, tiny writing. I was terrible at organising guests and used to get Chris to help me. Between the three of us, we used to completely f**k the show up. Well, actually, I used to completely f**k the show up. Once I double booked two clairvoyants for Mystery Mondays, Lee Everett, the ex-wife of DJ Kenny Everett, and Betty Shine, both rocked up at the radio station. There was a bun fight in the corridor as to who should go on air. Kath sorted it out, promising to pay Betty Shine a fee and travel expenses. You would have thought, being clairvoyants, they would have foreseen the double booking. So sorting a day out of exciting home-based activities is not something I can manage to do very well. So this is week three, and everyone is starting to lose their grip. I'm beginning to get confused by what day of the week it actually is. Every day is Sunday. I'm baking a Yorkshire tea cake. Well, I have mixed sultana, sugar, butter and cold tea and later we'll make the flour and egg mix, then put it all together and bung it in the oven. I miss British cakes. The Spanish cakes are, as my friend Maggie described them, all fur coat and no knickers. They look like delicious French patisserie, but the eating experience is quite unpleasant. Years of not being able to bring fresh dairy down to this part of Spain meant that the Spanish bakers improvised with a kind of fake cream you would find in one of those chocolate-covered tea cakes. A sort of white marshmallow filling. It makes cake eating very sweet and unsatisfying. I have to wait to cook the cake because Ricardo is coming to fix our broken air conditioning. Heat, light and sanitation are classed as essential jobs so he's allowed to come and see what all the blinking lights mean. We try to avoid using the air conditioning, particularly for heat, as I find it dries the room out too much. We use it to cool, mostly in the summer. My sister Elaine, in New Zealand, is the opposite. She uses it for heat, and she hates the air con on in the summer, when, as she says, she could easily open a door. 
I talk to her and my other sister Anne every evening now. Strangely, we are far apart, but now much closer than ever before. Uncle Peter called. I'd already sent him a message wishing him a happy 81st birthday. Peter was another great help to the family when my mother and father divorced. He came over to help us decorate and taught me how to paint and wallpaper. He was a maintenance and decorator at the time. Peter was married to Barbara. She was a gentle and kind lady to me. As a child I used to go there for tea sometimes when my mother was working. You would eat tea off a formica table in her kitchen that she kept so clean the pattern had worn off. Her whole house smelt of bleach and fresh paint. Not because my Uncle Peter kept open tins around the house, but because Barbara loved to decorate. Or rather, loved Peter to decorate. She was always having this room or that redecorated. There was one bedroom that within the space of a few months she had Uncle Peter repaint it three times. In the end, Peter said to my aunt, I think I'm going to call this the sick room. Why is that? replied Barbara. Because I'm sick of f***ing painting it. Barbara was not amused, and my uncle slunk off to the Marsham Arms for a rare pint with my dad. I thought that the experience of learning to paint with my uncle would hold me in good stead here in Spain. Spanish paint, though, is just like the cakes. All fur coat and no knickers. Ricardo arrived in his mask and gloves. The blinking is terminal. We have lost an aircon unit, and to replace there are about 800 euro. He turned it on, and I could smell burning, electrical burning. When can you fit a new unit? I asked. I can't. Everything is closed, and the government took my social security payment last night, even though I have no work. He then suggested that the Spanish Prime Minister do something that is probably physically impossible. Could it get any worse? I opened the laptop to discover the burning was not from the aircon, but the laptop. It is as dead as the parrot in that famous sketch. I shall have to buy a new one, but currently Apple is closed. Chris, thank goodness, also has a laptop, and I have spent a frantic time getting that to work. Luckily, most of my client work is in the cloud, or they have copies. Oh, and the seagulls, hungry as there is no longer a ready supply of food on the beach, have been looking for food up here, and are dive-bombing us in a kind of Hitchcock movie fashion, splattering bird guana in their wake. Week three. And this is probably our most difficult day so far. But I tell you what, these last couple of hours, I have never been so motivated in my life. <laughs>